If you are just starting to learn TEE or trying to build a stronger foundation of knowledge, well, this episode of Tea Time was created for you. I'm going to walk you through what I believe to be the most efficient, highest yield pathway to mastery in perioperative TEE to help you advance your clinical skills and also confidently pass either the basic or advanced PTE exam. Welcome to Tea Time. I'm Dr. Andreas Plakis, and in this episode 14, I'm going to cover the best way to learn TEE and also pass the basic and advanced PTE exams. The clinical question that's going to be covered is how can I learn TEE as quickly and efficiently as possible to provide optimal care for patients perioperatively? And before we jump in, hit that subscribe button so we can bring content to you as we make it. When it comes to learning TEE, speed matters and time matters. What do I mean by that? Well, healthcare providers today are busier than ever. Time is short, workloads are heavy, and unfortunately, many of the TE resources out there can be very long-winded. That's even one of the reasons I decided to make this podcast in the first place is to create more high-yield content to streamline learning. So my goal in this podcast episode is to introduce a blueprint that can help streamline the learning process and take you even from beginner stage to the stage of mastery when it comes to TEE learning. And this blueprint can apply to the anesthesiologist, cardiologist, cardiac surgeon, critical care physician, emergency medicine physician, sonographer, or any other learner that wants to invest time learning perioperative TEE. I'm going to outline what I believe are the four major stages in the TEE learning process. The first stage is the beginner stage. This is where your goal is to be able to repeatedly acquire standard TEE views and also identify the cardiac anatomy in these views. After this beginner stage comes the intermediate stage. This is when you can apply the knowledge from the previous stage to correctly diagnose simple heart pathology, and you can also use TE machine knobology properly. After this, having some sort of expertise, being able to exhibit guideline-driven TEE diagnosis of complex heart pathology. The fourth and final stage is to have mastery. This is where you have a shift from diagnostic to an advisory role. You can significantly influence perioperative clinical care using TEE by advising cardiac and non-cardiac surgical care teams. An example of this is where expertise would be being able to diagnose a given valve severity for a mitral regurgitant lesion. Mastery would be the ability to have discussions and advise on types of interventions, understanding the MR mechanism and how it will actually influence different repair techniques. I'm going to be recommending several different types of products, tools, techniques, and I think it's important to clarify that I do not have a financial relationship with any of the tools that I'm going to be recommending at the time of this recording. I am the creator, obviously, of this podcast, but my opinions are my own. They do not represent any of the products, tools, or techniques. I'm going to be recommending them solely because I think they are the most useful and most efficient for your learning process. A brief note on fellowships as well, whether you're performing a cardiac anesthesia fellowship, a cardiac imaging fellowship, this process and this blueprint I'm going to share are independent of those fellowships. It's what you do on your own time. Fellowships are great because that can be forced learning and forced case volume, but this is independent of those and it can still be applied even for people going through fellowships. Here is an introduction to what I call the tea time blueprint where we apply those four stages of TEE learning from beginner to mastery. The way that I recommend this being used is to start in the beginner stage and utilize all the tools, techniques, and products in that stage before going to the next one. This is meant to be worked top down through each subsequent stage one at a time. There are some tools that I recommend in the any stage category, which I'll get to at the end of this episode, but let's start at the beginner stage and we'll go to each one after that. Stage one of the tea time blueprint is the beginner stage. The overall goal here is to be able to answer the question, what am I even looking at when I'm looking at TEE images? To do that, I want us to learn all the basic TEE views and also be able to identify the cardiac anatomy in each of these views. 
Doing so, you should develop a three-dimensional awareness of these two-dimensional planes that you're going to be looking at in these images. And by the end of this stage, I want you to be able to perform a full TEE exam to manually obtain each one of these views. The process here ought to be slow and controlled, not hurried like in an operating room setting. That's why some of the products I'm recommending here are websites, simulators, or guideline papers. Take your time at this, learn it well, learn it thoroughly before advancing to the next stage. So let's look at some of these specific products in more detail. The first beginner tool that I want to recommend is the Toronto Virtual TEE website. Now this website is excellent, excellent, excellent at being able to help you learn your TEE views and also identify the cardiac anatomy in each one of those views. You can do this slowly at your own pace. And also if you have an iPad or tablet, you can download an app to be able to do this on the go. The next beginner tool I wanna to recommend is the use of a simulator to perform TEE. TEE probe handling is its own learning process learning the hand-eye coordination to be able to obtain the views that you want. Also, using a simulator can be great for helping you understand this three-dimensional anatomy while looking at two-dimensional images. My favorite simulator is the Heartworks one, but there's several products out there that can all work. Being able to combine that Toronto TEE website with a simulator can help you expedite your learning as well as you can see the actual views that you ought to be obtaining when you use the simulator. The last beginner tool that I want you to utilize is the ASC basic and comprehensive TEE guidelines. Now these papers are excellent and they teach you a lot of things that you need to know to perform a comprehensive TEE exam. Being able to perform a full TEE exam is a necessary step in this beginner TEE learning as it helps provide the framework for any future evaluation, knowing what order you evaluate things in, helping you do it in a reasonable amount of time, just giving you a structure that you can use for every future exam. That's why I dedicated a full podcast episode, episode five, the most efficient TEE exam to give you some sort of framework for how you can organize your TE exam images. The final step that I want you to be able to accomplish before you pass through to the next stage of the tea time blueprint is being able to perform a full TEE exam with the simulator and identify all the cardiac anatomy that you're looking at. The next stage, stage two, is the intermediate stage of TEE exam learning. This is where you can diagnose simple heart pathology correctly and also properly use a TEE machine. This is referred to as knobology, where you know what these knobs do and know how to operate them correctly. One of the most important intermediate tools is simply repetition and case volume. You need to do lots and lots and lots of cases. This is where you get a framework for the intraoperative clinical relevance of what you've been learning previously. You also learn speed. This is where you learn knobology as well. And doing this with good mentors will really expedite your learning. Find those people that are most willing to teach you and that you can ask questions to afterwards. Uh, two quick tips on this. The first, Try to get your mentor to let you do an entire TE exam without touching any of the buttons on the machine. That's what forces you to learn them quickly. They can talk you through it, but don't let them touch the machine. When you can do this on your own, you have really taken a jump in your learning. Also, ask your mentor if they're willing to review prior studies with you. TE learning is so visual, so the more things you see, the more studies you see, the more you will learn. The other intermediate tool that I want you to utilize is PTE Masters, this website. This, in my opinion, is the gold standard for current day perioperative TEE education. It's the most detailed, most comprehensive, and most complete resource out there. If you can only pick one source or one resource from the Tea Time Blueprint, Print. This would be that source. Oftentimes, significant discounts will be offered in the summer each year. This is when new fellows are starting their training and need to have a resource to really learn these things. Great resource. Would highly recommend it no matter the stage of your TEE learning. Stage three of the Tea Time Blueprint is the expertise stage. By the end of the stage, you should be able to exhibit guideline-driven diagnostic TEE expertise of both simple and complex cardiac pathology. The first expertise tool I want you to utilize are the American Society of Echocardiography Guidelines. These are listed on their websites at the link below, but these guidelines are for all things echocardiography, whether it's pediatric or adult, TTE or TEE. So here's a list of the specific ASE guidelines that I think are most relevant to learning TEE 
and getting through this expertise stage. There's numerous listed and a word of caution to you, these are long to get through. I've underlined what I think are the highest yield, most applicable if you want to just read a few of them, but there's a reason these are in the expertise stage. They take time, they take investment, but they are high yield to get through and there will be returns on your learning if you go through each of these papers. The next expertise tool is picking out an echo textbook and start working your way through it. You can use it as a reference, but I would recommend reading through it if you really want to complete this expertise stage. This will expose you to a whole host of TE learning that you wouldn't otherwise obtain. But these three textbooks are the ones that I would most recommend. The Clinical Manual and Review of TEE, A Practical Approach to TEE, and then the Textbook of Clinical Echocardiography. They're all excellent, but I just recommend you pick one of them and start working your way through it. Stage four going through the stage of TEE mastery. So you've learned to diagnose both simple and complex heart pathology before you get to this stage. Now you want to be able to shift to this advisory role where you significantly influence clinical care. To be able to do this, you really have to step outside of just pure echocardiography and learn why do I even care about a severe valve? What can be done about it? And this is where learning to step into the cardiac surgery textbooks, the ACC AHA guidelines, and further teaching opportunities opportunities can really help enhance why you even care about these things clinically. What are the surgical and non-surgical options in both non-cardiac and cardiac surgical settings? So the first mastery tool, cardiac surgery textbooks. The two resources I recommend are Cardiac Surgery in the Adult by Cone. This is a wonderfully written resource that can help you understand echocardiography and cardiac surgery techniques from the surgical perspective. If you're advising surgical colleagues, you ought to know what's going through their head as well. The other resource that can help accomplish these things as well is what's offered on the STS website, this Cardiothoracic Surgery ebook. This is a concise, high yield product that can help you understand the exact same things from a surgical perspective. It can be a little bit more expensive of a resource as there is a recurring subscription fee, but both of these are high yield ways to learn more from the cardiac surgical perspective. Another mastery tool, the ACC AHA guidelines. You've learned from the previous cardiac surgery textbooks operative solutions to cardiac pathology. Well, these can teach you non-operative solutions to certain cardiac pathology and when certain pathology would even be indicated for surgery. Gaining the clinical perspective of why the severe valve even matters, of why certain cardiac pathology even matters in the perioperative setting. These are all excellent papers to read. Last method dedicated to the mastery stage is teaching. How do you advance your knowledge? Well, you give it back. You be accountable to learners and you fill in your knowledge gaps that way. Any teaching opportunities count here, but some of the examples include lecturing, conferences, mentorship, consulting, publications, whatever it is. Seek out teaching opportunities and commit yourself to excellence in those. The last category of the Teton Blueprint is this any stage category. These tools are applicable to any stage of the TEE learning as you want to apply them. Some of these examples are podcasts, social media, YouTube, subscriptions, courses, conferences, the Journal of American Society of Echocardiography, or working together with colleagues. So the first tool I'm going to recommend is really a shameless plug for this podcast, Teton, the perioperative TEE video podcast. This is the first ever and only current perioperative TEE podcast. It was originally created to be an alternative to conventional TEE education by being high yield, clinically relevant reviews of perioperative TEE concepts in both cardiac and non-cardiac surgical settings. If you find this content helpful, feel free to share it with a colleague, someone you know that may also benefit from it. Again, you can follow us on Apple, Spotify, or YouTube, but this podcast is meant to be helpful in any stage of the TEE learning process and to be a high yield review so we don't waste your time and you can learn quicker. The next tool that can help in any stage, utilizing certain social media or YouTube accounts. These are not peer-reviewed resources or heavily scrutinized, so you have to take the information with a grain of salt, but it can frequently be helpful because of the volume of new pathology that you can see when you utilize these resources. It's also helpful to hear new perspectives that are different from your current method of TEE use. I'm not gonna go through each resources, but here are some of the excellent ones on YouTube. I want to give a shout out to this email subscription service as well. This is out of the University of Utah, who does great work in the perioperative TEE space in general, but also this free email subscription service can help you see numerous types of TEE pathology on nearly a daily basis. You can see the URL on the bottom of the screen here, 
but go to this website, hit the subscribe button, and then you'll get near daily emails that can expose you to all different types of TEE pathology with interesting commentary for each one. Another tool that can be applicable to any stage, utilizing conferences or coursework to advance your learning. The SCA offers an ECHO conference early in the year each year. This is a very, very high yield course that you can be exposed to all sorts of new material through. Also, the ASE has scientific sessions that you can go to annually as well. Specific courses that I'd recommend are the courses offered by the ASA SCA perioperative TEE course. This is for those that are trying to learn basic perioperative TEE. And then the review course offered by the SCA, the ECHO board review course for people trying to learn advanced perioperative TEE. Finally, to round it out, the Journal of American Society of Echocardiography has tons of new content that comes out regularly that you can continue to advance your learning in over time. And also finding colleagues along the way that you can do this journey with that will point out exam findings that they think are interesting, that can participate in educational discussions, I think are invaluable in the whole learning process. You can't do this alone. You do it far better when you do it with others. Let's turn our attention specifically to both the basic and advanced PTE exams. There's two major components and processes to these exams. The first of which is just passing the exam, whether it's the basic or advanced. The next is applying for actual certification. The reason this matters is because if you pass the test, you'll achieve testimer status, whereas if you complete the entire certification process, then you can achieve diplomat status. For the purpose of this podcast, we are only talking about step one, how to pass these exams. Some important information for the basic PTE exam is listed here. It's 150 questions divided into five sections. You'll have three and a half hours for the exam with additional 25 minutes to break in between sections and 25 minutes for non-disclosure agreements, tutorials, and surveys. And to be eligible for it as a North American physician, you have to either have an unexpired medical license or a letter of good standing from your program director if you're still in training. And the cost of it is just under $1,100 in 2026. There's a handbook on their website that has a great content outline for the very specific information that needs to be learned for this. Specifically as it's applied from the tea time blueprint, I would recommend that you complete the steps from both the beginner and the intermediate phase to be ready for this exam, that you go through each one of these resources and learn it well. Also, I partially highlighted courses at the end of this as I don't think they're mandatory, but I think that basic review course for perioperative TEE could be helpful for those that want an additional resource. Finally, look at this content outline. I would review this outline and try to address each one of those gaps that you don't feel comfortable with before for taking the exam. For the advanced PTE exam, this test is 200 total questions divided into five sections, 40 questions per section. You'll have four and a half hours to take this full exam with also an additional 25 minutes for breaks in between those sections. To be eligible to take this exam as a North American physician, you just need an unexpired medical license or a letter of good standing from your program director. And this is a little bit more expensive. It's just under $1,300 to take this exam in 2026. What course of action would I recommend be taken to pass this exam? Just like for the basic exam, I'd recommend those beginner and intermediate sections, and I go a step further by recommending the products in those expertise sections. Get a textbook you can work through and go through those ASE guidelines. I also would recommend a course or attending conferences to be able to really expose yourself to high yield review of certain concepts that may be tested. You can see the content outline is much more extensive for this exam, so make sure you go through that as well to be able to review any concepts that you don't feel comfortable with before you take this exam. In this podcast episode, we have reviewed the tea time blueprint that will get you from the beginner stage to the mastery stage as quickly and efficiently as possible. Save you time, save you hassle. Here's the steps I would go through if I had to do it all over again. Key takeaways. There are four stages of TEE learning. Identify which stage you are at and then work downwards from there. Utilize each of the tools in the respective category before moving on to the next phase. And the whole point of it, this T time blueprint should save you significant time and effort in your TEE learning journey and take you really as far as you're willing to go. The structure is there. It's all laid out. It's just up to you, the amount of time and effort that you want to invest to determine how far you want to go. The next episode of Tea Time will be episode 15, Rescue TEE, everything you need to know and nothing that you don't. 
I'm excited about this one, how to use TEE in emergency surgical settings to benefit your patients. We've reached the end. Thank you guys for watching. If you have not already, feel free to hit that subscribe button so it'll bring you new content as we make it. Also, if you like this podcast, please leave us a review. That's what helps us get this content out to more people and reach a broader audience. Also, feel free to leave a comment. Let us know what you think, what your perspectives are on this episode and others so we can all learn from each other. Thank you all for watching. See y'all next time.